Hey, Shalom Akim, Yabashima Shah Barakatha, the bonus of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well in sincerity and in truth, and to the hopeful elect. This is Brother Manasha from the DC camp. I got a quick lesson to go over. It's uh, in Yoruba. It's one of those uh, languages you have in uh, Nigeria and West Africa. So I speak the, the Yoruba language. But it's not as sharp as enough as I want it to be. But, uh, you know, I still uh, practice once in a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring out a few precepts and let you know that, you know, even though Israel is scattered among the heathen, this word of the Most High is written in different languages. So uh, just uh, bear with me one second. Yep, so this is a book of uh, Sirach, the first chapter. I'm going to go to the main point because uh, the Hebrew is very important to understand. But as you know, as Israel lose, you know, lost their identity, you know, they began to speak different languages. You know, they lost, uh, you know, how to say the name of the Most High. They lost their customs, you know, the laws, statutes, and commandments. So I got... Uh, the main point in Sirach, it says, uh, The prologue of the wisdom of uh, Yahweh Shai, the son of Sirach, whereas many and great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets, and by others that have followed their steps, for the which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom, and whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, but also that they desire to learn, be able to profit them which are without. All right, and then it says, both by speaking and writing. And uh, says my grandfather Yahushua, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law, and the prophets, and other books of our fathers and have gotten therein good judgment was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law wherefore let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them and not only these things but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. So uh, I'm going to go to the main point. Uh, one of my favorite precepts is uh, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter and the first verse. It says, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, Yahweh, our power, is one Lord. Okay. Uh, just go ahead and I read it to you in the Hebrew. And I could read it, you know, by heart, you know, from memory. So you have Shammai, Yashara, Yahweh, Alahai, Nawa, Yahweh, Akkad. Read to you about two more times. Shema Yashara Yahawa Alahai Nawa Yahawa Akkad Shema Yashara Yahawa Alahai Nawa Yahawa Akkad And then now uh, you pull up the Yoruba for you. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. 
All right, so you have uh, the book of Genesis on top there. So I'm just going to go all the way to Deuteronomy. Then I will uh, go to uh, chapter 6. And I'll read to you in verse 4. So it says, Ebo Israel, that means here, O Israel, Uluwa Lonhi, Uluwa Kon Shoshoni. I read to you one more time, well, two more times. Ebo Israel, Uluwa Lonhi, Uluwa Kon Shoshoni. That means, you know, Yahweh, Allah, Nawa, Yahweh, Allah, Nawa, I can't. I'll just read to you one properly uh, from the. From the Hebrew, because I get too excited when I read in the Hebrew. So it says, Shammai, Yashara, Yahweh, Alahai, Nawa, Yahweh, Akkad. So, Shammai, Yashara, Yahweh, Alahai, Nawa, Yahweh, Akkad. Yeah, just bear with me. We got all these pop ups. You gotta deal with You're not trying to make money with this video. But, uh, so it says, Ebo Israel in here, Israel. Uluwa Lorim Yahweh Allah Hanawer, the Lord your power, Yahweh. Uluwa in the saw also he could use that as for Yahweh is one. Khan Shoshoni. When Khan means uh, one, and then it says when you have the S with the dots underneath, it's just like saying the the shy. Uh, character and you have a shy, so they have show show means only ni mean when it says ni means is. So I read to you one more time. It says a bo. When it say a, e, this letter a e right there with the dot underneath is really talking to a person directly. The G B O with the upward stroke. You know, angling to the right, that's uh, the sharp O sound with the dots underneath. So that makes it O. And you have, uh, the, you know, have the word Israel there. And you have the dot underneath the E, that makes it E. So you have the word Israeli. Or if you pronounce it the Yoruba, we say Israeli. Uluwa, Olonwi. We have the O. With a dot underneath, it makes it a short and sharp O. So, alone when you, that means your your power, your power, your power. Oluwa Konsu Shoni, he's the only, he's the only one, he is one. So, that right there lets you know that the word of the Most High can be written in different languages, but it doesn't have the same force as by the Hebrew. Because when you have a shot, I was speaking to Paul, you know, he spoke to him. I, you know, I said, well, Paul you know, spoke to him in the in the Hebrew tongue. And then, um, let me get to another precept here. I'm going to get you the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 4. Verse 7, it says, uh, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Then I take it to the Yoruba. Just get, get me one second. All right. So, it talks about, so the, in Yoruba, the word for uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is Iwe Owe. The word for book in Yoruba is Iwe. And when you say Proverbs, you know, that's uh, Owe. So that's O W E, it will away. That's the book of Proverbs. And then Psalms is known as uh, 
Orlin Daffy, or the Songs of David. So I pull up uh, the book of Proverbs, and then I go to um, four, chapter 4, verse 7. It's uh, totally something totally different. All right, so this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. So it says, Be uh, ba fe bon bere si kog bon. And it says, Oh, yo, 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 le tuni. Ogbonju, Ogbondoju, ni tori no. Je ologbon. All right, just build me one second. I would uh, get that ready for you. All right. Let's build me one second. So that right there is, uh, give me one second, let me get the proper. So it says, uh, be a perfect bone. That means if you want to be wise, better see a common have to start learning so um you see the hebrew the hebrew word for uh beginning you're looking at the breakdown for genesis they say in barayash or barayashiat in the yoruba the word for beginning there is bearer means to start or to begin and then the word there for see means to uh, start oh well you have to meaning better see cogbon whom you till the tune so it says Ogbon Loju meanings wisdom is the main thing and it says Nito no Jail Logbon I read to you one more time it says Bio Bafe Bon Better see Cogmo on you till the tuni Ogmo Loju Nitorino Jail Lobo. So that is a uh, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I'll read one more time. So it's in Proverbs 4 and 7 says, Be a bafe bon, bere si kogon, on yo utio le tuni, ogbon lo ju, ni to rio no, je o logbon. So it's telling you, wisdom is a principal thing, with all that wisdom get understanding, or with all that getting get understanding. So I would, uh, I'll pull out the blue letter and let you know. Well, I'm just going to go to the book of Acts. Because, um, it was just, you know, prophecy. Acts chapter 2. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the words, the wonderful works of Yahweh. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What minute this? Okay. Yep. What minute this? So, you know, that's just fulfillment of prophecy, man. Yep. It's just the Most High pouring out the Spirit upon the disciples uh, back then and now to have the gift to speak in different tongues, other languages. So, um, let's go with one second. Let me do a, another quick, uh, Bear with me. Oh, I got all the precepts I want to bring up. So, I'll get you a. Uh, let's see. I just did a search on First Corinthians. First Corinthians, the fourteenth chapter. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Um, uh, let me just start from the main point. So this is First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse. Um, I'll start from, from, from 3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesied edifieth the church. I would, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. In verse 6 it says, uh, Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even without uh, even things without life giving sounds whether pipe or harp except they give a distinction in the sounds how it shall be known what is piped or harped yep so um well let me just continue to read for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, 
how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. There's the languages, you know, humans, and then, you know, the sounds of animals. And none of them is without distinction. Therefore, if I know not what the meaning of the voice it's like, if, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown, in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is of fruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say, Amen? At the giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. For thou verily give thanks well, but the order is not edified. I thank my power and speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousand words. In an unknown tongue, brethren, be not children in understanding, how be it in malice, be ye children, but in understanding be men. Uh, verse 21 In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people, and yet for all that will not hear me, say the Lord. I read one more time, verse 21. In the Lord is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people. Well, brothers know what that precept is in Isaiah. And yet, for all that they, and yet for all that will they not hear me, said the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned, or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship Yahweh, and report that Yahweh is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you had a psalm? How to doctrine, how to tongue, how to revelation, how to interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most three, and that by a course, and that by a course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interp interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. And let him speak to himself and to Yahweh. All right. So that's the. Yep. Actually, uh. Yep. That's good enough. So, whereas I want to read the rest, we read the rest. But other than that, the, the scriptures are very heavy. And then, uh. Get you the book of uh, Psalms.
Psalm 68 verse 11. It's one of my uh, favorite precepts. It says, The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it. Alright. So that is the work of the prophets to publish the work of the Most High, to prophesy, to make public. So I'll go back to the Yoruba and I read to you Psalm 68 verse 11 yeah just bear with me I'm just using the two of those uh, cheap apps but nevertheless, it still works. All right, Psalm 68. So that's 68 verse 11 right there. So what if see Ulua in capital letters? I was talking about the Mosai Yahweh. So there it says uh, Ulua for him. That means Mosai gave the word Ogunlogo. That means great great company. Ogunlogo Siniamu to Kidiorore. Read one more time. Ulua for him. Ogun logo sini sini awo tio kede arare. So that means uh, you know, like it says in the English translation, it says, "The Most High gave the word. Great was a company company of them that published it." So you can tell there's a huge difference, man. The vibration is totally off if you look at the Hebrew. And the Yoruba is totally different. Uh, pull up uh, the Hebrew right here. Psalm 68 verse 11. So that right there tells you. Okay, so that's that's Adanya Nathan uh, that's uh, Amar Great that's Rab Tazaba that's the company Basar published. So that there's a uh, Adanya. Uh, let's see. Yan Natamara. So like I can't even see it clearly, but but in birds get the gist. You can see the uh, you see the word uh, Adanya there. You see the word Tazaba. I see the word, the Hebrew word, uh, Rab. So you have uh, Amar. Okay. Yat Yatan. Let's see. Now that there is Amar. One second. One second. One moment. 
that's uh ha ha ma bash rat hama barash hama bash yeah you better want to say can them really properly so you got a ha you got a ma you got a ba sha ra wa and the tha that's a uh, hama bash hama bash rath hama bash rath yeah so that word there is not really uh translated so you have a uh, adanya nathan amar and then you have um rab it was great company tazaba and you have uh Bashar or just read it properly does ha ma bashar what ha ma bashar what so that's um adanya yan yatan Yatan Amar Hamabash Bash Bashra Bashrawat Basharwat Hama Basharwat Tazaba Rab You just gotta practice more the Hebrew sometimes you practice you know it flows you know properly you know, your tongue doesn't get uh, twisted up but eventually you know once most that warms up your spirit you know everything starts to flow just like water in a stream yep so in verse 11 it says the Lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it and then go back to the euro bar that's what i gotta do it I'm trying to go the cheap way <laughs> yeah you're gonna have nothing but pop-ups so verse 11 psalm 68 says lua for whom who can log god sinning i want you okay there already yep so the most i gave the word grit was the company of those that published it yep and then um it's uh it's one of those one of those uh precepts that you can never forget so I'll just go back to uh Let's see, I'll try Proverbs, the first chapter. So this is Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. He says, Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttered her words, saying, How long ye simply ones? We yield our simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon my spirit unto you I will make known my words unto you 
Yep. So that's also part of the prophecy of the all the disciples, you know, uh, distributing that wisdom to the you know the Jakes from the foreign lands. So I go to uh, Proverbs chapter one. I'm just gonna read the uh, twenty one. All right. Then it says, uh, well, it says, On kig belori o di lu, on sorrow near more in a body lu, only a lime or corn. That means you simple ones. Lt where Tony no I am more coin. That means a tick where Tony no I'm more coin. That means how long will you love simplicity? I want where gone where gone. Yo t ni no did ni. I want where gone where gone. Yo t ni inu inu didu where Tony no where gone where gone. So that's verse 22. I read it properly. Uh, give me one second. It says, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scornings, and fool and fools hate knowledge. Yep. So, any alignment will come. Oh, cheek, where you know I'm more coin. I won't, where go, where go. You tea, you tea, me. You need to do pay. To, you know, I go, I go, pick a one. Tea, I won't, oh, go. You see, Korea, you more. So when you when you music say songs in Omugo, Omugo, that's um the O M U G O meaning a dummy. So that's uh, verse twenty two. One more time, it says, um, "How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity, and the scorners delight in the scorning, and fools hate knowledge." So another word for fool. In Yoruba, it's a uh, omgo. Yep. So, um, let me bounce back to a uh, if I get uh, let me just get your revelations. The first chapter, Revelations chapter one, verse three. It says, uh, Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So this will be a good uh, point to stop, and uh, get you some more details, Lord willing, uh, in the next lesson. So, uh, this is a proverb, actually it's like, yeah. Uh, let me get uh, the book of Revelations. So the book of Revelation in Yoruba is also known as Ifinho, meaning to show, to reveal. Alright, so I'm going to read you uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3. Yeah, I'm second tired of these pop-ups in the bottom, but you know, don't let that distract you. So, um, all right. So, 
So verse 3 of Revelations chapter 1. Uh, let me get this properly. It's not even coming on quick. Alright, so this is Revelations chapter 1 verse 3. He says, Any chul banka or sotele ye ati awon chul bangbo. That means, blessed is he that read it. Uh, that's the first line. It says, Any chul banka or sotele ye. That means, whoever is reading this word. At I want to bang bo and those that are hearing it. She wants sing. She I want own tear cord and you're doing whatever is written. She urire. When I say urire, meaning she blessed. Need to re a coco. Well, they didn't say that properly. Need to re a coco. Ti yo shele sumo tosi. So it says Nitori a koko Ti yo shele sumo tosi. Then it says uh, this is the time is gonna be fulfilled. So uh, if we go back again and look at um Revelations chapter one verse three it says blessed is, blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand so for the time is at hand that's translated as nitoria koko tiyo tiyo yo shele sumo tosi meaning the time is at hand just like in the book of uh, Habakkuk you know, at the end it shall speak so that right there lets you know man the the vibration you get from reading the Yoruba is totally different from when you're reading the Hebrew. Yeah, because uh, it takes a while to get to master the language. Sometimes, you know, you got to take your time. But you always got to take your time to read the word properly. Because, you know, some words could mean uh, different things. Depends on depending on how you use it. So I read that Revelation chapter 1, verse 3 one more time. It says, uh, in Chilban, Ka, when it says read in Yoruba, it means Ka, K A. In Chilban, Ka, Oro, Oro means words. A sotele, that's prophecy, Yi, means this, and is A T. Amo, that's, um, you know, those. Tio Bangbo, those that are hearing, Ti Washin She, Oon Tiako, you know, those that are doing it, just like the book in Romans tells you, hearers, you gotta be doers. He is telling the same thing. Say, Ti Washin She, Aon Oon Tiako, She Uriire, meaning they shall be blessed. Nituria Koko, Tio Yoshele, Sumo Tosi. So, when the word for happen is uh we have the s e l e with the dots and the neat so when you have the s with the any the, the, the e with the dots underneath that makes it the, the sound sh you know just like in the character if you have a shy the sh sound and we have the e with the dots underneath it's uh um, a and then we have the mark slanting backwards to the left that's kind of uh you call the amisale meaning you it's like you drag it but you don't uh, put so much emphasis on make it, to make it sharp you just make it make it long but not too long so we say shelle meaning happen and then near is sumo so you have the 
the the, the little character bro the u that means it's a short a short u sound and the little line above the o the dot underneath makes it a short uh the sharp o in the o sound sumo sumo to c so see when the o doesn't have a dot underneath you basically uh I mean, making your mouth round, but uh, it's it's basically the old sound. And then it says tosi, meaning nearer. Sumo tosi, it's getting nearer. So sumo means near, tosi, near. They both mean the same thing. So that's about it for now, Akim. Uh, I'll present to you by Shima Shai. And, uh, you know, speaking the language is kind of... Uh, it's a big challenge. You just gotta, you know, practice every now and then. You got Yoruba movies you could watch if you know just to make your Yoruba, you know, better. You got books, you know, they got um audio Bibles on there you could listen to. It kind of makes your uh, understanding of the language better. And then uh you know how it is, uh you know, the most I just put this word out there in different languages. So that when you hear it, you understand, you know, if it rings well with you. And then, uh, oh, let's see. Let me just get uh, Romans. I mean, sometimes you want to stop, you know. You just got to keep on going on to the most high, you know, tells you stop. So this is Romans chapter 8 verse 16. It says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. Alright, so I'll pull it up in Yoruba for you and I'll read it out. Uh, bear with me. So I'm looking for the uh, book of Romans, Ephesians, Corinthians, Rome. All right, I'll go to uh, chapter 8. So it says in uh, verse 16, it says, Emiko no new saw. Siwa Lokon we Omo Lonewa meaning the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the most high. There it doesn't say Omo doesn't mean son, it just means child. But it's you know it's the same thing, you know, it just use the word to represent child. So in verse sixteen of Romans eight chapter it says a me means spirit, con K N means uh one is all same. It says emiko no ni nin so siwa loko meaning the spirit is speaking to our mind. We that we means that or more learning wa so emiko no ni so siwa loko we so that's the Yoruba for um, Romans chapter 8 verse 16 the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh so with all praises here by Shima Shai, double honors to the apostles and the uh, elders of great new stone that uh, bring out the word of Yah by Shima Shai in sincerity and truth and the hopeful elect that are diligent you know say Shalom